Hi, my name is Antea. Our work reports of the first zero-power crop water stress detector based on a micromechanical photo switch monitoring leaf transmittance change. The technique that I'm presenting today relies on the dependence of the leaf transmittance on the plant water stress that is quantified by a parameter called leaf relative water content, to which I will refer as RWC from now on. The leaves of non-water stressed plants have low transmittance in the short wavelength infrared region of the spectra due to strong infrared absorption by water inside the leaf. When the plant is illuminated by the sun, as shown in the schematic in figure A, if the leaf is not water stressed, the sunlight transmitted across the leaf and reaching our sensor, which is placed right underneath the leaf, does not have sufficient power to trigger the sensor on, meaning that the infrared power received by the sensor is below its design threshold, and the system remains completely off with zero standby power consumption. However, if the plant is water stressed, the leaf's transmittance increases and the power received by our sensor increases as well. When it exceeds the power corresponding to a predetermined RWC value, meaning the targeted threshold power, the sensor turns on and activates the system to perform a response that can be used to eventually trigger an irrigation system. To go a little bit into details of what the sensor itself looks like, as shown in figure B, the sensor comprises a pair of symmetric suspended cantilevers, one with an infrared absorbing head and the other one with a reflecting head, and an inner and outer pair of thermally sensitive B-material legs separated by a thermal isolation link. The infrared absorbing head with the integrated plasmonic absorber can selectively convert impinging optical power to heat. Upon the absorption of narrow band short wavelength infrared radiation, a large and fast increase of temperature in the corresponding inner pair of legs results in a downward displacement of the cantilever, bringing the platinum tip into contact with another platinum contact on the reflector head. It's important to highlight that the sub-micron air gap between the contacts at standby translates directly into zero leakage current and therefore zero standby power consumption. Figure C shows the narrow band absorber of the absorbing head. It is centered at 1.47 micrometers with a bandwidth of 150 nanometers and it has an absorption of 93%, represented as the orange curve in figure D, that is spectrally selective to the water absorption valley of the leaf's infrared spectra, where there is a significant dependence of transmittance on RWC. In fact, this graph, achieved with a Fourier transform infrared spectrometer, shows the measurement of the spectral absorptance of the fabricated device, orange line, matching the water valley visible as a bending part of the other lines, which are transmittance of a dry, a water-stressed, a mildly water-stressed and a non-stressed leaf. The leaf RWC has been chosen among other indices to establish the plant's water stress level, because it is relatively easy to measure and it is widely adopted in literature. In this work, to calculate the wet boundary, meaning the maximum level of water content where RWC is 100%, a leaf was left overnight in the ionized water and then, after pot drying it, a circular piece was chopped from it and weighted. The dry boundary, RWC equals 0%, was found as a final step of the experiment by placing the chopped leaf in the oven at 80 degrees Celsius until dry and then remeasured. The RWC was found by measuring the weight of the leaf at different water stressed states and using the dry and wet boundary values in the equation presented here. The chosen plant was a soybean because it has a fast response to water stress which allows time efficient experiments as well as it is a broadly farmed energy crop. Before demonstrating water stress detection using our device, we first characterized the light's power reaching the sensor plane through a leaf at different RWC levels, and as a consequence also the leaf transmittance as a function of its RWC. We did so by replacing our sensor that needs to be tested in the vacuum chamber with a commercial power sensor. The experimental setup used is shown here on the top left. It comprises a vacuum chamber, a broadband quartz tungsten halogen light source, a mirror to reflect the light within the vacuum chamber, a leaf and a short wavelength infrared transparent diffuser used as a 99% transmittance reference. Both the diffuser and leaf with the same diameter matching the one of the window of the vacuum chamber. A commercial power sensor has been initially placed where our sensor would go for the water stress detection demonstration, with a filter matching the one of our sensor and a pinhole as large as the absorbing head of our device. 
the power console was used to read the measurements. This experiment started by measuring the power reaching the commercial power sensor within the vacuum chamber through the diffuser, which was the 99% transmittance reference placed on the window. Then the test proceeded by replacing the diffuser with the leaf at its wet boundary level, and the power reaching the commercial power sensor was measured for a fully healthy leaf. After that, every five minutes, the power was read from the power console and the leaf waited for decreasing RWC values. The results showed that the transmittance increases for decreasing values of RWC. The previous experiment to characterize the power reaching the commercial power sensor plane was done to both calibrate the transmittance versus RWC as well as guide the setting of the voltage bias to our sensor for the subsequent water stress detection demonstration. The measured power for different RWCs sets the required threshold of our device, which can be tuned by adjusting its bias voltage. For this final experiment, our device replaced back the commercial power sensor into the setup, which now looks as in figure A. We used a source meter to apply the bias voltage to the device and a DC supply to reset the device. The pulling voltage of the device was first measured by sweeping the bias voltage across the contacts using the source meter and found it to be 6.57 volts. As from results visible in figure B, an 88% value of RWC was chosen as the initial mild water stressed level at which the fabricated device was fine tuned using a voltage bias of 5.91 volts to achieve a threshold of 794 nanowatts. Due to the pulling voltage effect, the contacts of the device latch after each detection. To reopen the switch for the next detection, a 1 volt pulse applied to the reset heater in the reflector head returns the switch to an open and off state until triggered on again by above threshold infrared. During the reset of the device, the vacuum chamber's window was covered by a shutter to give time to the leaf to reduce its RWC. Then we applied a bias based on the next expected value of power measured from the previous experiment. We removed the shutter and as expected the device turned on when the RWC reached a value that corresponded to that power. The multicolor curves in figure B show the five order of magnitude current change when water stress detection occurs at different RWC levels according to the tuned V-bias values. As we expected, the device remained completely off with zero standby leakage for higher RWCs. The change of transmittance in the range from 100% RWC to 61.8% RWC is only 3.7%, but our device is able to differentiate between the infrared power levels at these two RWCs, since we are talking about a 98 nanowatt difference. Finally, figure C shows a test for repeatability. Here we can see the measured current through the device in response to chopped infrared radiation transmitted through a water-stressed leaf. To conclude, the first ever zero standby power detection of water stress implants through leaf transmittance was experimentally demonstrated. We tuned a micromechanical photoswitch sensitized to short wavelength infrared emitted by water stressed plants under illumination to perform water stress sensing at different RWC levels. Due to the zero standby power consumption of this technology, maintenance costs such as battery replacement can be eliminated, hopefully paving the way for the realization of large scale deployment in crop fields with fine spatial granularity. A huge thanks goes to my teammates for the everyday support and great cooperative environment surrounding our research. And a special thanks to you for your interest in our sensor and for watching my video.